Alrighty guys, so what is going on? Anxious here, and welcome back to another reaction video. Today we are reacting to an infographic show. Video. Um, this is called No Sitting for Seven Days Challenge. So the infographic show has a bunch of challenge videos, and they're all really interesting for me. And I sit all the time, uh, as you can tell. I'm sitting right now. Uh, I sit a lot. So I would like to see how he's not going to sit for seven days because that means he can't drive a car. That means he's got to try and, you know, sit up. Like, like, His hover. Legs are gonna give out. He's got to try and hover over the They're bowl. He's not going to have any rest for weeks. Well, he can, he can, no, 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 no. He can lay down and shit like that. But he can lay down. He can't, he's he just can't down. sit. Oh, okay. Like, he just can't sit. Like, like you know, uh, sitting, a sitting, a sitting position. So that means he can't drive and shit like that. But he can like sleep in the back of the car, I guess. But I guess let's see what it's like. Hey you! That's right, you sitting there behind your computer or phone screen. Get up off your lazy keister. Get up on those feet, you bum, because today we're gonna be finding out what happens when you don't get to sit for a whole week. The infographics office is as fond of reading about medical studies as you are. And when it comes to sitting or standing, it seems scientists can't decide on which will kill you first. So for the sake of our viewers, we decided to put our world-famous science team on the case to figure out just how bad standing can be. And no, it's not just because some of our staff saw a documentary on flamingos and thought to themselves, hey, what would it be like to just stand all day? We're doing real science here, folks. And to crack this nut, we're once more putting your favorite lab rat and our writer with the best medical insurance on the entire staff on the job. Day one, no sitting for a week. I read the words over and over again in my inbox, trying to make them sink in. Is this even humanly possible? I guess it's my job to find out. All right, so I immediately thought about how in the world to accomplish this. I went online to find out if there was a world record for standing. I found a site full of records set by average jokes. Things like, and no, I'm not making this up, longest time balancing a table tennis ball on a nose while standing. Longest time to stand straight on someone's shoulders. And my personal favorite, largest group to sing happy birthday while standing on one foot. Apparently, you can just submit your own video proof to set a new record, and this record can be for literally anything someone else hasn't done before. By the way, this site appears to be quite popular with Indian people, who submitted like half the records. Way to go, India. You guys are the world record holders for setting world records, I guess. I found another site where world records for standing still were recorded. And incredibly, an Indian man, no surprise there, once stood perfectly still for an astonishing 35 hours and 22 minutes, stopping only due to an insect bite. It must have been one heck of an insect bite. I couldn't find any records for people actually standing, though, just the standing still ones. I definitely don't plan on standing still. I've had my fill of lying under camouflage and trying to be as perfectly still as possible with bugs and reptiles crawling on you. I'll be living my normal life, just no sitting allowed. How I'm actually going to do this is another thing entirely. The rules are that I have to remain standing at all times, which includes sleep. And mm. no, I can't cheat going from standing to laying down. Never mind. I have to stay with okay. my feet physically touching the ground the whole time. This is going to be insane, but I figured that the best thing to do will be to keep busy. Day two. All right, yesterday was the most exhausting day of my life, and honestly, I'm not sure if I can physically accomplish this entire challenge. My day started out normal enough, I guess. I got up out of bed and kissed sitting down goodbye for seven days, then hopped in the shower. The girlfriend and I have this game now where I don't tell her what my new challenges are unless they're taking me out of the house, like to live in the woods or something, and instead she has to guess what it is based on my behavior. She's smart as a whip, that one. And the moment that I started eating my breakfast standing up, she guessed that I wasn't allowed to sit. She laughed and then asked me for how long, and her eyes kind of went wide. She said that she doesn't think that seven days is humanly possible, and I kind of agreed with her. Then she asked how I would feel because of my physical issues due to service-related injuries, and I kind of shrugged it off. Thing is, she's right. Due to some pretty severe bone fractures and general wear and tear on the body, I don't have the stamina I used to, and my back and legs are prone to pretty bad aches and pains. I almost got a medical discharge after fracturing lower back and hip, but after a few weeks of recuperation, I showed up at training wearing full kit and determined to prove that I didn't need to be discharged. It practically killed me, but I managed to convince superiors not to push a medical discharge. Maybe now it's clear why I'm so determined with these challenges and why I take them so seriously. I do not make a habit of quitting. 
So today I found out how hardwired we are to sit. I went throughout my day and kept having to remind myself not to sit whenever I saw a chair nearby. It was just sort of a reflex. And even when I went over to Panda Express nearby for lunch, I had to remind myself not to sit at a booth. I guess we really don't realize just how much sitting we do. Of course, I had to walk to that Panda Express because driving a car would mean sitting. I'm thinking, though, that I might buy one of those hoverboards and just the bill into infographics. Walking around all day is kind of exhausting. First day was rough, I'm not gonna lie. I'm in good shape, but standing all day is rough, especially when your back and hip is completely shot. Sleeping was interesting. I took inspiration from a documentary I saw on the International Space Station. Uh, wow, on the ISS, wow. astronauts actually crawl inside a sleeping bag and sort of zip themselves up so they don't just float that? around in zero gravity. I don't know, I think if I was an astronaut, I'd love to sleep while floating. It must feel amazing, though I guess bumping into walls wouldn't be an issue. Anyway, so I took a sleeping bag and cut two slots in the back, and I ran 550 cord, some of you might know it as parachute cord, through the two slots and then wrapped it from the top of the door to the bottom of the door. Then what I was left with was a sleeping bag securely fastened to the back of our bedroom door. Sleeping was as easy as sliding in and zipping it up. The 550 cord wrapped several times from the bottom of the door to the top of the door was more than secure enough to keep me up. The girlfriend had a difficult time adjusting to my sleeping arrangement though. She said that I looked like a man insect in a giant cocoon and that in the dark it kind of really freaked her out to see me just hanging there. Also she was worried that the cord would snap or something and I'd break my neck in the middle of the night but I reassured her that Court got its name from the minimum requirement of being able to hold at least 550 pounds. It was originally used to parachutes, after all. I'm not gonna lie. Sleeping standing up is probably a lot easier for horses and astronauts at zero G. It was not pleasant at all, but luckily I was so tired from standing all day that I did manage to fall asleep. Lurching forward the entire time was incredibly uncomfortable though, and left me with a huge crick in my neck. So I managed to flip around inside my sleeping bag and end up in a slightly reclined position instead. That made sleeping easier, but in all seriousness, this is probably my top three horses. My entire family, when I was younger, always got extremely pissed at me because I could sleep with my face buried inside my pillow and they couldn't. Did not fuck the suffocate? Yeah, they couldn't breathe, so they would always get mad at me when they would walk in on me sleeping and I'd be like, face in something. They'd be like, bruh, turn the fuck up. No. Fuck you. Sleeps of all time. It's a new day though, and I'm not looking forward to it. Day three. Last night's sleep was likely worse than the first night. I managed to get the cord keeping my sleeping bag propped up a bit of slack, so I'm reclining more while staying up with my feet. But honestly, this is just the worst challenge ever. To add insult to injury, the girlfriend got up in the middle of the night for some water and in her groggy, half-asleep state. She forgot I was tied to the back of the door. So when she came back in and the door barely budged open because of all my weight, she basically <laughs> shoved the door backwards and smacked me against the wall face first. Yeah, honestly, I'm hating this challenge. My second day of no sitting was worse than the first. I tried to keep myself busy, but my back is seriously starting to hurt, and so doing any work was out of the question. The one person who's ecstatic about this challenge is the dog who got taken for like 12 walks today just so I could keep myself away from the temptation of sitting. The girlfriend and I had her date night yesterday, and I'm always determined to not let my challenges ruin it. I had to think about what in the world we could do with me not even being allowed to sit inside a car, and I got a brilliant idea. I dug up our old rollerblades that we haven't used in years and told her to throw them off. Then we rollerbladed down to the beach, taking our dog with us on the leash. We spent the entire evening going through an art crawl and the food trucks on the beach, and then played our favorite game. We separate and one of us walks, or in this case rollerblades, far away from the other. Then approaches and pretends we've never met. The object of the game is to try to pick up each other with the most ridiculous or outrageous pickup lines we can think of. We play this game everywhere, and typically this means there's an audience for our ridiculous pickup lines. One time we were at a very fancy lounge, and while I've been away, like a guy had tried buying her a drink, only to have me come back. Up and down and say, one hey, was your dad a boxer? Because you're a knockout. Then she started laughing so hard she almost shot her apple teeny out of her nose. He grabbed me by the collar of my shirt and kissed me. All while the poor guy looked completely baffled. By the way, tonight's winning line, it came from her rollerblading up and asking, Are you Israeli? Because you is really hot. I gotta admit, she's not as cool as I am at this game, but that one was damn good. Despite this ridiculous challenge, I still managed to make date night fun.
and I'm kind of glad I wasn't allowed to sit in a car and drive us somewhere. It's been a while since we just went out without a particular destination in mind, and I really like the fact that we didn't have to be doing anything special for it to feel special. This morning I woke up with some pretty severe aches and pains. A lot of it, I think, is my body and old injuries, but a significant part of it is the act of just standing all the time. Sleep is damn near impossible, and I think if I hadn't had almost a decade's experience sleeping in the most uncomfortable places in You're the world, able to do I wouldn't be able to manage more than a hour or two. If the military like teaches me. you one thing, it's how to sleep. Like when he says severe, he hat. really means that shit was fucking crazy day painful. Best, though. Mm -hmm. Day four. All right. I had Damn. to throw in the towel on this challenge. I believe that this is officially the first challenge I've quit on my own. I failed one other challenge before, but it wasn't my fault. True challenge fans will know exactly which one that is, by the way. I managed to power through my day, but it wasn't mm -hmm. easy at well, all. I can't remember the tell name, but I remember the this down. standing up was taking on me. And she very sweetly tried to rub my shoulders and lower back throughout the day as much as she could. She told me that she can already feel knots forming on my back, and it's not surprising. Normally, I had to follow a pretty strict yoga and stretching regime to keep my busted back and legs from aching and hurting. And obviously, I'm not able to do that when I can't lay or sit. Honestly, I can deal with the terrible quality sleep in my very weird man-insect cocoon I jerry rig. It's the creaking aches and pains that make this unbearable. Maybe if I tried this when I was young, before damn near a decade of lugging around almost 100 pounds on my back. I had an interpreter once tell me that Taliban fighters call American soldiers donkeys because of the ridiculous amount of gear we carry everywhere we go. I'll also admit that rollerblading for a few hours the day before was not as great an idea as I thought. That exhausted my legs, and while we had a blast on our impromptu date yeah. night, it severely drained my stamina for this stupid challenge. Also, do you have any idea how hard it is to put on and take off rollerblades when you can't sit? I had to hang on to the girlfriend. If I wanted to pass this challenge, bro, I would just stand up all day with a flash paint TV on the fucking wall, eat some food, yep, like order food, and just watch videos all fucking day. Like, like that's how you don't exhaust your legs all day. I don't know how I would sleep. I would just wake up, fall asleep, and get get tired enough to sit up. But I'd probably fall the fuck over and lose a challenge like that. Like that, that's how I sleep. But you know, I mean, if you fall flat on your fucking face, I mean that. Take my nose, it's gonna go into my brain. What happens? Come on, look. Damn, I'm too fat. I'm too fat. Entire time, so I wouldn't I'm fall flat on my face. My I'm not a fan fat. of quitting anything, no matter how psychologically or physically hard. But sometime late last night, my legs literally just quit on me. I got a horrible cramp in my left leg, and my knee just buckled. Sending me to the bottom of my sleeping bag cocoon. I got up, determined to keep going anyways after the cramp subsided, but the girlfriend had woken up and was really concerned. She told me no, she was pulling the plug on this, and yep. then demanded I get to bed with her. <laughs> I really did want to keep going. I probably take these dumb challenges too seriously, just like she always says, but it's important to me not to quit. <laughs> she insisted baby. though in the very stern way that she only ever yeah. does like once, maybe twice a year, with something she is not willing to compromise on. These things are almost always related to my health, safety, or well-being. Because I guess I do have a habit of putting all three of those things in jeopardy. The only other time she's done it this Same. year was a few months ago when I wanted to buy... You wanted to pop a question? Did you not pop the question? That's what we're going to do. She's right. Just how like, many bro, I swear to Don't God, I almost died. I almost died like a thousand times at this one job that me and my boss were at. Because the stairs that we were going down through this basement were so fucking slanted forward. Every time I would try and carry a bag down on one fucking shoulder, the weight would just like almost make me fucking fall. Jesus. Ooh. So a couple times I ended up getting to like the fourth step and having to run down so I didn't fall. Merch. <sighs> Dina Moore from the Crazy. movie Alien and well, in hindsight, I guess she was right. I mean, it was awesomely life-size, too, and it stood over seven feet tall, but I guess waking up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and run into oh, that thing so would likely be a heart so attack. Oh, so, I failed my challenge, and the girlfriends booked me a pretty yeah, intense man. massage therapy session with our local yeah, thigh massage place. Uh, I go from time to time for a deep tissue uh, massage, and let me tell you, those little Thai ladies are absolutely brutal. If the CIA wants enhanced interrogation techniques, forget waterboard. Just have these feisty little ladies go at the bodies of terrorists with their elbows, feet, and knees. It works, yeah. though. And you may have to leave in a world of pain, but the next day, all the knots in your muscles are gone. We heard about that before, bro. That should have been 
That that was probably the massage place that Joe said I got a one too in L. A. Uh-huh. They probably the Thai massage place. Where they his was ass. Punch, she was punching and throwing elbows at his back. <laughs> so and shit. throwing elbows, <laughs> some knees in there. <laughs> Oh, yeah, guys, gotta watch that video. That shit was hilarious. Congrats. But, guys, uh, look up to me, bro. Just gotta we'll see you guys in the next video. Yeah, we should react to some, uh, some more Joe's Join videos. Join Post Notification but... Squad. Let's suggest in the comments. Yeah. Peace.